Okay, 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 I'm going to Universal Studio. Mommy, I'm going to go to Universal Studio. Are you guys ready? Yes. Bye. Alright, guys, we're finally here. I mean, say car park, Karyo, and then we are trying to go up. Uh, so, they, uh, so that way we could go to the city walk and here we are um, we are joined by Arzu and his school parents his school in law Zaru um, since it's our first time um, going to the Universal Studio we were like really really exci excited and then after that we had to go to the security check right there and it did in line we pick weekdays you know uh, line ones up on it but still my god there were so many so many lines um but it was wonderful <laughs> Yeah, the shortest wait time to get in right now is at this main archway at the end of the red carpet. As soon as um, the line cut uh, Rami Vitra Gai Pasisi, we took pictures, I know. Um, that's Arzu, Arzu ka mommy, daddy, and Arzu ka uh, sasu mommy. And in Universal Studios, the two parts are divided by the lower upper, I know. And we first decided to um, explore the lower part. So here we are going downstairs.
asli asli kızım. Gel dila.
new baby Stegosaurus, one of the latest additions to our Jurassic World family. However, that would be extraordinarily dangerous for all of the human beings in the vicinity. Thank you. 
what's next, so she's gonna have all the energy she needs for the next training session. The stillness is a little more so the folks off to our left right now. Our trainer Andy is entering the park with Juliet the Triceratops. Typically, there would be at least 13 in this area. She's a herd animal, but uh, she's probably very friendly toward other triceratops. Not so much the velociraptors with other velociraptors, but definitely triceratops. They're very friendly animals. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this performance of
higher performance, keeping all aisleways clear. Thank you, and enjoy the show. The future. The polar ice caps have melted, and the continents are deep beneath the waves. The survivors live on these floating fortresses known as atolls in this place called Waterworld. Brave explorers voyage in search of the legend of dry land, the last remaining on the planet. But the deacon, maniacal leader of a group of evil raiders called Smokers, is determined to find dry land first. He's ensured that no explorer has ever returned until now. Matt, what do you got? It's a woman! Looks like it's Helen! Cal, return signal! Open the gates! Close the gates! <laughs> Matt, keep a lookout! Helen! eyes on this. It's just pure dirt. How'd you come by this? I've been to dry land. Oh, dry land is a myth. It's not a myth. I've been there. It's our salvation. We can all start new lives on dry land, but we have to hurry. The deacon and his smokers are after me. Smokers in the distance! Battle stations! Helen, get to the tower!
golf ball. Hold that up. <laughs> that kid has my golf ball. No, no, no. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we might actually need these people. Bag this. Oh. Oh. Brothers and sisters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Deacon. You hear that? These people are not your brothers and sisters. Am I right? Yeah. Somebody shut him up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Where was I? Yes. Desolate children. You pour lost souls on this floating piece of sheet metal. The provider has spoken and he told me personally that someone here knows the way to dry land. Yes, my flock, dry land. We're going to pave it and drive it, tax it, tie the tree toe above. We're going to use it. Cruise it, fill it, drill it, and build an 18 home monument to my beloved self. You'll never find dry land, Deacon. I won't let you. And neither will the Mariner. The Mariner? Chuck, close the gates. The Mariner. You mean your half-man, half-fish boyfriend of yours, the one that poked out my eye? Is that what you're talking about, huh? Ah! Ah! Bring me the girl. Right here. Smoke? You want to play games, Helen? Let's play. Keep an eye on her. What do you got up there, boys? We got an A-tower! And he's got dirt! Ah, dirt! See, I need to know the way to dry land! So the name of the game is called The First One Who Talks Lives. Leave him alone! He doesn't know anything. Well, that makes you the winner. Helen! Don't you tell him anything! And that guy, the loser. Drop him! You're gonna tell me the way to dry land, Helen. Yes. Or you're next. Jet skier approaching at high speed. Excuse me just a moment. Shoot him, Chuck.
with the fish boy. He's not your kind. I don't think he has a kind. Let's fillet the flounder. Chuck, you're not going to ruin my plans for dry land, you gillneck, mutated freak. Weapon, you're a freak. Get me a weapon, Chuck. All right, Mariner. Come on, it's just you and me. Man against fish. <laughs> something on your back. Why is he still alive? Get up there, Chuck. I want him dead. When you're done, signal my seaplane. Have it blow this place to keep them out. I'll take care of them. Shut up. Say hello to Big Bertha. <laughs> Woo. Why don't you do us all a favor, huh? Stand in one spot! <laughs> Using Chuck as a shield. Yeah, I never liked Chuck. A single tear rolls down my cheek, Helen. Signal my seaplane! How do you like that? All my men are dead. Good. Yeah, we'll see what you're going See the ladder start climbing, Helen. Oh. oh, I have a brand new vision! Pilgrimage for two to dry land, Helen. Just picture it. You and me savoring the sweet flavor of dry land together. <laughs> You just show me the way. Nevertheless, I've got your woman. I killed your friends. Who's gonna stop me now? You? I don't think so. You don't have a leg to stand on. Yes, 
I, Deacon of Waterworld, celebrate the birth of a new nation! Dry land is my destiny! Hey, Deacon! Hey, what? No! Civilization may start anew on dry land, while the mariner rolls the four points of the compass on the end of sea. Ah! side of the arena. Thank you, and have a great day at Universal Studios Hollywood, the entertainment capital of LA. <laughs> Mama, Haki Sagam, Mama, Haki Sagam, Haki Sagam, Haki Sagam, Haki Sagam, Did you see that on No. I can't 
Come on, come on. Come on, come Harry Potter. Harry Potter right place. Swiss in the one is a Matti Summer. Top Mazar is on. Daddy, extra day, then it's right. Okay, and how about them? He's still here to the show. So, 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 You, Eleanor Shelstra, are dead. Oh, sorry, mommy. Cool. This okay. Location, the afterlife. I have never ever seen this. You're in a good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. It will be. Maybe it's not all that bad. <laughs> What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. So these do look very different to the days of Frankenstein, but you might be able to recognize. Let me show you some footage from that film. You can compare and contrast the uh, so the archways are pretty recognizable. The Court of Miracles, the first time the monster appears to the villagers, is coming up here. Oh, the right side of the trail. And if you're a fan of the good place, the very famous train stations out there on the left side of the track. movies have come a long way since the days of Dracula and Frankenstein. So here's an homage to all those universal creatures in those features who've come since. have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet, but just have them in your hand because we're about to return to Sky All right, everyone. Do keep your personal belongings in hand. Adventure does await us.
Paradise. You all just witnessed one of the most intense 360 3D films in the world. We will go ahead and take those 3D glasses off now. I promise if anything else is flying at your face, it is real and you oh. should duck. That was brought to you by Peter Jackson's team at Weta Digital. We have another thing from the Lord of the Rings trilogy in a little film called Avatar and Avatar Way of the Water. These guys have won some Oscars. The screens are 40 feet tall and 180 feet long using incredibly advanced technology. They incredibly advanced technology to animate this trailer, what you all are seeing on screen right there in 363 D. And they made this long before we had the VR headsets doing 360 filmmaking. These guys pioneer it for you on the tour. And looking straight ahead, they're looking at the shot that they're working on. Here you have to take into account that people are looking in all directions. Also, one of the things about this is that the only thing that they're used for working on is no cuts. You can get one shot. That's right, everybody. One shot with no edits. I mean, that was a far off the backside over there. Don't worry, the only people in it were animated members of Peter Jackson's family. But basically, what we like to call a picture car in Hollywood. Now, a picture car is any car used in the filming of a movie or a TV show. And let me tell you, they can take a beating. That's what I said. Yeah. Here's my favorite thing about picture cars, is we don't shoot movies in order. Which means we could shoot the finale scene of the movie on the very first day of production where we blow up the picture of the car. And then we need to have that same car magically intact the very next day to shoot one of the first scenes of the film. So how do you think we do it? How do we blow up the picture car on day one and it magically intact on day two? You guessed it. We just get ten of the same car and progressively beat them up to match the shot. Lucky for you all, we have some intact picture cars coming up here on the left side of the tram. Get your cameras ready because we're rolling on in the picture car row. Mm, we got this car move. from Back to the Future minus the manure. Move. You're welcome. Yeah, we're at the top of the now, all these cars do have working yeah, engines. Well, except, of course, you know, the Flintstones cars because those had to be historically accurate. Just kidding, they have golf cart engines. Or the flying forward from Harry Potter. Or my personal favorite, the gyrosphere from Jurassic World. And what's missing around the gyrosphere, anybody? What's missing around that gyrosphere? The glass that surrounds it. Yeah, very good. So here's the deal with glass. It's terrifying to filmmakers because it reflects the camera. Can you imagine seeing a close-up shot of a T-Rex from inside that gyrosphere and then seeing a reflection of the camera guy, Hank, in the shot? It would never work. So we had that glass in in post production. But since we are speaking Jurassically, how about a little theme music for our next section? Sing along, everybody! No one knows the lyrics? You guys. That is an actual Jeep from the first Jurassic Park movies. All you will see props and picture cars from Jurassic movies. On the left side of the tram, you're going to see a raptor cage. It's actually made of plywood, I think. So not exactly going to keep a real raptor in there, but it looked real on camera. And the mobile lab of the second Jurassic Park movie, Jurassic Lost World, excuse me, not Jurassic World, Lost World. And then out the right side of the tram, we actually have some cute dinosaurs. Well, we normally have these really cute dinosaurs in those. Ages. I'm not sure why they're not there at the moment. Ah, it's a little weird. Anyway, as I was saying, we are... Oh, there they are. There they are. Aren't they just the cutest? Car 3, you're sitting down. Car 4, no one can save you now. Now we're actually coming up on the 30th anniversary of the first Jurassic Park movie coming up. Nobody we all know the first Jurassic Park came into our lives because Steven Spielberg directed the movie. Steven Spielberg actually calls Universal his ancestral home. He used to sneak onto this lot as a young man to spy on movies getting made. And eventually they gave him a job. And as soon as they were seeing him trespassing, the a tour is kind of like me. And he gave a tour one day to a young writer who had gone many years later to be none other than Michael Crichton, who wrote the book Jurassic Park. Which then Steven Spielberg turned into the movie. Jurassic 
Park, right back here on the Universal Island. All right, up next we're gonna give you all a little weather demonstration how we make it rain in the movies here at Universal. So you've got some lightning back there, some floodlights flashing against the building by Car 4 to make it look like lightning. Obviously thunder and sound effects. Blasting that sound of thunder. But how do you think we magically make it rain on camera when the director calls action? Sprinklers! I text sprinklers. We've been doing it that way for a hundred years. Perhaps to your eye that might not look like rain in the lens of the camera and the framing on it. It's just like rain falling down from the sky. Now, I will say for a bigger weather effect, it's not quite as simple. It's like a really big weather effect. You can hide together. Go play for go home. You know what I mean? You can hide together. Do it for real, everyone. And uh, what I mean by that, and I, uh, I sincerely apologize, but... Um, right next to a natural disaster. You should consider yourselves very lucky. Carl Lemley demonstrated his big flash flood in the opening day of the studio. He couldn't get a measurement quite right. He flooded the entire studio, including the audience. So, here's a clip from Big Fat Liar starring Frankie Muniz, as Amanda Bynes, Apology of Mom, too. You can see that flash flood on your screens. As we roll through the rest of our old Mexico sets, you may recognize this from Nacho Libre, King of the Cristo Skull, and the Three Amigos. Also, Lady Gaga shot her Judas music video on our Flash Flood Hill. But I'm like Paul Giamatti, Lady Gaga did it in heels. Well, everyone, I don't know about y'all, but we're going into this next section. I do feel a bit of an accent coming on, so I do believe we're headed into the old west. Welcome to Six Points. No, not worry, I'm contractually obligated to drop that accent right here. Welcome to Six Points. These are old Western sets. Jimmy Stewart, John Wayne, they filmed on these streets. But you know who else just did? Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio in Quentin Tarantino's ninth film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. They were shooting here for an entire summer, and I guarantee you, if you watch the movie again, you will recognize these sets. Now, if you look out the left side of the tram, you're going to see a shorter doorway, and out the right side of the tram, you're going to see a much taller doorway. We didn't lose our tape measure, that's for good reason. Back in the old western days, sometimes our leading men weren't quite as tall as their leading ladies. So we put the leading men actors who were shorter in stature in the shorter doorways, they appeared taller, and the taller leading ladies in the taller doorways. So this day, hot set meaning everything is perfect, don't touch it. This movie takes place in the San Francisco underground of the 1980s. So you take a look around to the production designers who have done incredible links to make sure this set matches the script. And we have the payphones from that time period, the turnstiles, the maps on the wall, even the advertisements. They really put a
Disaster movies like Earthquake were huge for Universal in the 1970s. It started out with the movie Airport in 1970 that was shot in an actual airport in Detroit, but they came here to Universal to use our parking lot as their runway. You know what they say, you give a director an inch, she'll take your whole parking lot. But of course, it elevated to the biggest natural disaster of the 1970s of all, which was Jaws. So we are headed back in to Abity Island. And these visitors are perfectly safe. We actually shot Murder, She Wrote right here at Amity Island, also known as Cabot Cove from Murder, She Wrote, all 12 seasons. And we have a tribute to the late Angela Lansbury to show you today on the sets of her treasured show. She graced us with her typewriter for many years. So an homage to... Oh, that's not... That's not the Angela Lansbury tribute. That's a shark in the water. Okay, that's not, I didn't get the memo. I thought we were doing the murder she wrote thing. We were doing the Jaws thing to say, hey George, hey George, we're not doing the murder she wrote, but I guess we're doing the Jaws one today. Did you get the memo? Because I, I didn't get the memo. Do you, do you guys think George got the memo? Yeah. Nope. I don't think he did. Okay. Well, um, every time there's a dead body on my tour, I have to call it into human resources and file a bunch of paperwork. So I'll be right back. You guys just sit here, I'm sure. I'm sure you all are perfectly fine. What could possibly go wrong? Shark. The filming of Jaws was delayed by over 100 days. And to put that in perspective, you could have shot a whole other movie in those 100 days. And the young 27 year old Steven Spielberg was sweating. Jaws was supposed to be released around the holiday time, so it had to instead be postponed in the following summertime. The summertime, when no one's in the movie theaters because everybody's at the beach. And Jaws was so terrifying that it chased everybody off the beach and back into the movie theater, making it the first summer blockbuster of all time. And the reason we have summer blockbusters to this day, the reason the Marvel movies come out in the summertime, the reason Fast 10 just opened this summer, is all because that darn shark in Jaws didn't work in the first place. Not so much from the lion shark. The shark was frustrated. It didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio news. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited a minute. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark was rolling up for a while there and it was a shark. So I really owe the shark a lot. Indeed, he does owe that shark a lot. He also owes his editor, Verna Fields, a lot. Steven's editor, Verna, was actually the first person to look at the lack of footage of the Jaws and think this might be a good thing. If we don't ever see the shark at the very end of the movie, we'll follow the suspense and make it one of the most terrifying films of all time, and she was right. Verna would go on to win an Oscar for Best Editor, and the truth is, back in the early days of filmmaking, women like Verna invented film editing. Film editing was actually invented by film stitchers, former seamstresses, Hired by the studios to sew a film together, and women invented film editing. 
right, this is very cool. Not every tour gets to see the sets because it's often one of our most popular sets for shooting TV shows here at Universal, our very famous uh, 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 Colonial Street. Now, it was originally assembled for the movie The Burbs starring Tom Hanks. All these houses were scattered all over the lot and they were assembled here to make a cul-de-sac for The Burbs and it would go on to be Wisteria Lane for Desperate Housewives. If there is one thing everyone in suburbia can appreciate, it's a good neighbor. But like I said, these sets are very popular. Their most recently shooting Never Have I Ever over here and Quantum Leap were all shot right along here. Here's a few more of our famous TV shows that have been shot right over here on our famous Colonial Street. TV shows and movies. The right side of the term, the purple house, is the Munsters house from the black and white sitcom The Munsters. And that brown house right there with the white trim was where Jimmy Stewart lived in the movie Harvey. And if you look really close, you can still see the invisible rabbit on the front porch. That joke is for two people on this tram. You know who you are. All right, everyone. Now that we've survived the mean green suburbs, we're headed into the middle of nowhere. Welcome to our wilderness road. We keep these trees in this forested area so our uh, movie crews can get themselves away from the big city and the hustle and bustle. The shoot seems to take place in the middle of nowhere without having to go over the middle of nowhere. So we have this patch of forest here to look like you're really far outside of the city when actually you're just around the corner. You also have a very famous Steven Spielberg drive. We really treasure the legacy Universal has tied to Steven Spielberg's career. We actually named this entire road after him. Steven Spielberg to tell you a bit more about his uh, career. I was about 16 years old and I began hanging out at Universal during my summers. When I went to college nearby, I continued to come on a lot and try to become a director. Universal sort of is my birthplace. This is a place I consider my first home. And I love it there. And uh, I keep coming back. Steven Spielberg's first movie was a car chase film called Duel. And in honor of that, at the top of Steven Spielberg Hill, we do have some bonus picture cars for you all. We got Mr. Bean's Mini Cooper, a couple Fast and Furious cars. The beige car is from The Mummy, starring Brendan Fraser. And the piano truck is from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Now, I know some of you are up here from out of town. I'm not sure if you all have uh, hotel reservations for tonight, but I'm pretty sure this next location has a vacancy if you're still looking. Only one person is staying there. Uh, you can see their car parked right out front. It's actually also the car from Psycho. That is the Ford from Psycho, speaking of picture of cars. Because you can see it's a lovely establishment. Great reviews on Yelp. Highly recommend. <laughs> Did you all know the famous shower scene in Psycho with Janet Lee? All the blood in that shower scene was actually chocolate syrup, making it the most delicious horror film of all time. And at the top of this bill, you will find Norman's mother's house. Norman's mother's house from the first and second Psycho movies. This is the actual house they filmed. And you look in the upper left window, you can see Norman's mother waving hello. Go ahead, play. Yeah. Probably watching. Let them see what kind of a person I am. Let them see what kind of a person I am. Back like that. Back like that. Okay. 
Alrighty, everyone. Welcome to the shark attack. I think it's time we land in the middle of the plane crash. Welcome to the War of the Worlds. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed for vision and speed. Again, to sit down to talk about the world. I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. Listen, close your eyes, okay? Get them closed. Robbie, get in. Get in. They bought that from a retired airline graveyard. You can tell it's a retired jetliner because it's got ashtrays and armrests. They bought it for $60,000, which you know what they always get you in the shipping and handling. It was $200,000 to bring it on to this lot. Hence, well, we have no intention of ever moving it. We're approximately the 10 minute mark from the end of our tour. We'll be back to the theme park shortly. Remember to pull that cord above your head if you need any assistance. Now back on Steven Spielberg drawing. We have had a long history of collaboration with directors like Steven who really define a generation of filmmaking. Ron Howard, Amy Heckerling, and that is no different today with writer, director, Jordan Peele. And his newest film, Nope. <laughs> Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible notion and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Planet, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star... Yeah, Mr. Puppetinkers, be careful with that! Stop. Hang on, everybody, this is quite a ride! <laughs> Imperial Palace, here we come! <laughs> this is so exciting! Oh, watch where you're going! We're going to hit those rocks! It's like the river just ends up ahead. Let me see that. According to the map, it's a waterfall. Hey, watch it! The bridge isn't finished yet. There they are! Oh! Abortion here! The bridge is out! Hey! <laughs> your back. I thought we lost you. Please try to stay with us. You're supposed to be our backup. Wow! Shh. We need to be quiet, Poe. This is the dreaded Kang territory. Did you hear that, guys? Shh! Why is Kang so dreaded? Shh. Mr. Pig, please. Kang's wolves are the most feared and ruthless river pirates anywhere. But why? Hello? He's a wolf pirate. And he's known for his coming. Boom traps! I am Kang! Imperial Highness, 
It is with great pleasure offering you this I am king. Really? I will defeat you in the spirit realm! You're outnumbered. Three to one. Not for long! Give me that bottle! Or both of you don't can! Power of cheer! <laughs> You're no match for my hammer! <laughs> special delivery. You are my special delivery. Wait, me? Then I'm what was in that bottle? The secret ingredient to my hot sauce. <laughs> Dad, your hot sauce is awesome. And your tongue is as formidable as your kung fu. Yeah, well, I've had a lot of training. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. Bye, guys. Shaka that was it uh, it's already 9 p.m guys so we're heading home now um so i'll be so i so i mean we have it's already late and it, it will take an hour to reach home but universal studio was like way better than i imagined it's like really really adventurous i know if you live in los angeles make sure uh, to spend a day at universal studio it's 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 worth it guys uh so that's it for today thank you so much for joining or watching our video don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell icon for more videos i will see you guys in the next video all right bye bye for now